Good morning, Grace Church. Good morning. What a beautiful day today, isn't it? I want to welcome you all to our church. And if it's your first time here, please enjoy our company as we worship our Lord. Um, we have a wonderful service in store for you today. In your bulletin, there is a host of announcements, so I'm just going to touch on a couple of them. A reminder, Rally Sunday is next week, September 8th, so please come and enjoy in that celebration with our kids. The sweet corn update, we had a great weekend selling sweet corn. We are $3 shy of $1,200, so. <laughs> um, I have a special thank you to the pickers this weekend. <laughs> Jill, Joan, Gary, Art, Randy, Nancy, and Tom, thank you for all the help. And Neil sat out there all day Friday um, and sold. So it was just, it was a wonderful day. I love seeing the hands and the feet of our Lord in action in our community. The conversations were just wonderful. Um, so we have another week or so of picking. And uh, so if anybody needs corn, let us know, but we'll be putting our trailer here in the uh, parking lot throughout the week, and then hopefully again next weekend, and uh, hopefully we can uh, raise some more money for the church. September missions, um, we're going to be focused on collecting for the men's hygiene products. And um, just a reminder that as we sing our opening joy song, the words are in your bulletin if you need those. Otherwise, if you were able, please stand and join in the ringing of the bell as it calls us into worship.
let us be in a time of prayer. God of all creation, we come today to worship you. We come today to be reminded what it means to have Christ in us, Christ with us, and what it means to be Christ through us. Through us means that we are given the chance to become more Christ-like each and every moment of each and every day. We also come today on this holiday weekend to thank you to thank you for your gifts of forgiveness, your gift of mercy and of love, your gift of family, friends, health, and finances. God, we are a grateful people. Today, today we also come to ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness of our sins and of our trespasses. We come humbly into your house of worship to lay our sins down at your feet, down at the foot of your cross. We come this morning to have you intervene, to intervene and to replace our hearts of war with words and hearts of peace. <coughs> Today we also pray for our leaders, leaders in our families, leaders in our schools, <coughs> leaders in our places of work, <coughs> in our church, leaders in our neighborhoods, our state, our nation, and leaders of our world. Please, God, give all those who lead the wisdom of Solomon and the hearts like Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. And this morning, we also lift up special prayers for our family and friends here at Grace Church who are asking for special prayers. And we're going to start with Bob and Sue Aaron, who several days ago lost Bob's daughter. Barb Kane, Terry Thompson, Berkeley Danhoff and Larry Schultz, Nathaniel Crow, Kevin Elwood, Carolyn Diedrich, and Dan Schwant. We lift up and praise and bless those who are in our military. Keep them safe. Steve Kane, William Nichols and Nate Burr, Lucas Holtz, and Tom Gray. We also pray for those who have been lifted up to protect us locally, our police, our firefighters, and our ambulance folks. Jeremy Schultz and Christine Story, Jeremiah Johnson and Trevor Wright, Kelly Smith, Brittany Austin and Alex Herzberg, Dan McClure, Robert O'Fallon, Russell O'Fallon, John Colzer, Brad Melhoff, Mike Kemish, Dean Herzberg, and Dusty Belkamp. And now let us take a few moments to lift up our silent prayers. Now let us take all those prayers that we have spoken aloud and those that we have lifted up silently and wrap them up into the Lord's Prayer that we were taught to pray over 2,000 years ago that we still pray this morning. Please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. Amen. All right. Would our children or those who are young at heart please grab a bulletin from somebody near you? You don't need all the stuff that goes in the bulletin, just the bulletin. And come on up front for the children's message. And while they're coming up, you got to know that I have a warped sense of humor, right? Raise your hand that you know I have a warped sense of humor. Yeah. So Linda and I are sitting up here, and we're looking out at everybody sitting here and kind of envisioning those of you at home that are watching us online. And we're seeing kind of this big void right in the middle of our worship space. How everybody goes to that side or that side or back behind or sits way in the back. So we were trying to come up. Come on up, kids. We were trying to come up with ways to get people to incentivize them to come into the middle. Now, we're going to keep thinking about this if you guys continue to kind of sit in your favorite spots. But what we came up with this morning is I'm going to take next week a $100 bill, and I'm going to tape it to a basketball, and I'm going to heave it right into the center, because I'm a pretty decent basketball player, and we're going to see how many of you guys come in and grab that. All right? So there's your challenge for next week. If you want a chance at the $100 bill in the basketball, move on in. Hi, guys. <laughs> Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Have you got to come on over here, sweetie? Sit by me? You're going to sit right there? Okay, cool. So you've got your bulletin. We're going to use that in a minute. So I have a question for you. Has there ever been a time where you were too short to get something? like too short to reach something on a cabinet or too short to grab your toothbrush? Oh, come on, you guys. Yeah, you have been too short. Yeah, there we go. There goes the head nodding. So here's a story about me when I was a little girl. Can you believe that when I was a little girl, I ate a ton of candy? A ton of candy. And so when I would come home from school, my mom would take the candy and she'd put it way up on the top shelf. And why do you think she put it up there? So I couldn't get to it, that's exactly right. So I kept looking up there and looking up there thinking there's gotta be a way for me to get that candy. So when my dad would come home from work, guess what I would ask my dad? Can I have some candy? That's exactly right. And my dad was feeling kind of guilty because he was at work all day, so guess what he would do when I asked him? He would go up and get me the candy. So I know who the candy dude was in my family. It wasn't my mom, it was my dad. So the question for us this morning is, why do you think my dad got the candy for me? Because he didn't see it with me all day, that's right. He didn't know how much candy I'd eaten. And who asked him to get the candy for me in my story? My mom. My mom did. My mom asked him to get the candy because she was kind of done with me in candy. So my dad kind of turned into my mom's helper. And he helped me get the candy. He helped my mom not have to get the candy. So he was being super sweet to our family. So he was kind of like our helper. She's got the story right. I kept asking mom, mom would say no, and finally mom would go in the other room. I'd ask dad, and dad would pull through for me. Yep, because dad was my helper, for sure. So, do you all know that we have helpers too? Do you have any helpers in your family? Who's some of your helpers? You, you have a dad? You have a cousin who's a helper? Nobody helps you, you just do things independently? Okay. Well, let's look at our bulletin, because today what we're talking about is, open, up the, open it up, the first page. Got it open. Yep, there you go. It says Christ in us, Christ with us, and Christ through us. So Christ is with us, and he is our helper. So now you can go to the front of the bulletin. Can you go back to this page? And you can see where we have again, Christ is with us because he gives us the helper called the Holy Spirit. And anybody have any idea where Jesus and the Holy Spirit live? 
they hang out in heaven sometimes. They probably go up there for meals and to say hi to God. But where do they really live, live? In the ground. Oh, not in the ground. In our hearts. That's exactly right. That's where they live. So they are always with us. So when we need help or when we need candy or when we need toothbrushes or other kinds of stuff, we know that we can ask for help with our parents and our family and our friends and our siblings because Christ is with them also. So how about a prayer? Can we fold our hands, please? Thank you. Father God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ, and thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to be with us and to be our helper. Please help us to be more like you and bless us and keep us safe as we go on our day. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can bring these back to whomever you borrowed them from. Thanks for coming down. And please sit back and be ministered to by our fabulous musicians this morning. is o'er and time for me will be no more guide me gently safely 
home to thy kingdom dear lord to thy shore just a closer walk with thee granted jesus is my plea daily walking close to thee let it be dear lord let it be Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So good morning again, friends and family of Grace Church, those who are in our worship space worshiping with us, and those that are here joining us online. And today we are continuing our sermon series on Christ in us, Christ with us, and Christ through us. Is it just me that's getting that big back feed? Are you guys getting it too? Yep, well, I think we're... Okay, okay, perfect, no worries. So, as we learned last week, uh, this is actually our mission statement. Christ in us, Christ with us, and Christ through us. So, it's really part of our tradition. It's, it's weaved into the fabric here at Grace Church. walk in the front door. So it is really part of us. Christ in us, Christ with us, and Christ through us. So last week we spent a few minutes and what we did is we unpacked Christ in us. And that means that we're continually asking ourselves the question when we come into interesting situations, tough conversations, on very uncomfortable spots, what would Jesus do? WWJD. What would Jesus do? And we ask ourselves, what do we need to do to step into the light, to act and talk and respond like Jesus would? Now, if you happen to miss that particular uh, message or that particular uh, time, you can jump onto our website at PainesvilleGrace.org 
or you can check us out on our Facebook post. But this week, we're going to move into what does it mean to be Christ with us, Christ with us. And one of the most important words in the Bible is the word Emmanuel. Emmanuel. And Emmanuel is a symbolic name that was given to Jesus. And it is an extremely important word because of what it actually means. If you translate it back into the original language, Emmanuel means Christ with us. Christ with us. So at Christmas time, when Jesus put on his human skin, and when he came down to this earth to spend time with us, it was the time that he came to learn what it's like to be a human, what it's like to see people sin, see people trespass, step into tough conversations, step into uncomfortable spots, and still have Christ in us. So I'm going to take you back just a few years, uh, back to 1944. And it happened in a German city, and it happened to a gentleman by the name of Diedrich Reichel. How's that for a good German name? Diedrich Reichel. And he was living in a city in Germany at that time that was being bombed, and thousands and thousands of people had been killed. Not very much unlike what we're seeing today in the Middle East and in the Ukraine and many other places around the world. So we can bring the story into the here and now, even though it happened back in 1944. So all of this is going on around him. He got to the railroad station, which was actually acting like a medical kind of facility. And he sat down, and he happened to look up, and most of the top of the roof had been bombed out. But here's the inscription that he read that day. It said, Beyond the stars there must live a gracious father. Beyond the stars, there must live a gracious father. So he was lying there looking up at that inscription, seeing all the horror that was going on around him, and here's what he thought. He thought, I don't want a God like that. I don't want a God that looks and acts like that. I don't want a God who's beyond the stars. I want a God who's here. I want a God who is present. I want a God who understands what's going on here and now, who knows what I'm going through. And yes, we've got the greatness and the supremacy of God. Clearly we do. But we don't want a God that just lives up in heaven and hangs out there. We want a God that is here with us. Christ is present a God that continually reveal himself to us the here and now. So we got to kind of be honest with ourselves too, my friends. If the only God that we know is way up there, up there somewhere, where we can't reach, where we can't relate to, where we can't talk to, who dwells somewhere up in the stars, that God has little value to us little value whatsoever. We don't want a God that only lives up there in the stars. We want a God who's down here who dwells with us. A God who understands what it's like to live through some of our crazy times and some of our family and friends' crazy behaviors and some of the crazy stuff that goes on around us. We want a God who understands that we go through suffering, that we go through pain. We want a God who is near us and that it is what it is like to have Christ with us. Emmanuel, Christ with us. And I love that name because we not only need to cry out to God away up there, all we have to do is cry out to him right here because he is in our hearts already. He hears us and he knows us. He knows how to answer our prayers, maybe not in the time of which we want it, maybe not in the place of which we want it, but he does answer our prayers. So we're going to take just a few minutes this morning and we're going to talk about a few reasons as to why we really need to embrace that truth that Christ is with us. And here's the first reason. Christ is with us in our service. And you know, serving Christ is probably one of the most important things that we as Christians get called up to do. Now, sometimes we do it within these church walls 
and equally as importantly, we do that work outside these church walls. And you know what? It can become really, really exhausting. People can serve and people can serve and they get tired and they look at their calendars and then they're tired and then they feel like they have to serve some more and people just get plain tired. But that's where scripture comes in. That's where the Bible says in the Old Testament and in the New Testament many, many times, it's where God promises us unique and special and uplifting messages to those of us who are getting tired. So we're going to hear one of those moments this morning in Scripture. And we're going to take a moment, and it happens to be happening to Moses. And remember, Moses in the Old Testament had this incredible vision with God, the burning bush. And God calls Moses up to speak, to lead the people. And he had a pretty big job that he was getting called up to do. He was getting called up to go to King Pharaoh and to say, let my people go. So listen to this dialogue for a moment. The first reading comes from Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. But Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant. But I am slow of speech and of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute, or deaf, or seeing, or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now therefore, go, and I will be your mouth, and teach you what you shall speak. So you heard the reading. It said, I will be your mouth. Do you guys know anybody that you wish God was in their mouth? Yeah, <laughs> I think we all do. Well, if we know those people, maybe we could suggest those verses to them. So God is saying to Moses, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about what I've, been called, what I've called you up to do because I am actually going to be your mouth. I will be with you. And frankly, mission work gets really, really tiring if we do it by ourselves. We can get discouraged, we can get bummed out, we can get frustrated. But when we have Jesus with us, Christ with us, Christ in our mouths, it's a fabulous partnership. It's so much better than working on our own. So next, it is Christ is with us in our struggles. Now, we have at least two things that bind us together as Christians, at least two. There's probably a million more, but we're only going to talk about these two. First of all, we are all in the body of Christ. So if you're a Christian, and if you know Jesus, and if you've accepted Jesus into your heart, you are in Christ's family forever. We kind of call it the Christ forever family. And here's the other thing that we have in common. We all have problems, challenges, and issues. And most of us have discovered that as we became Christians or as we become more Christ-like, we have problems that we didn't even have before, before we became Christians, but now we got even more challenges and more problems. So we all have them. And if we don't admit that we have them, then we got even a bigger problem that we can talk about at a later time. So what we need to do when we're going through those challenges and those struggles is we need to ask for help because Christ is in us, and that's where we can go for our help. And Christ doesn't just come down and say, hey, how you doing today? Do you have a problem? He waits for us to bring the problems and challenges to him. That is what it means to have Christ in us. And the Bible actually says many, many times that Christ is always there for us, and Christ goes through with us through a lot of stuff. So here's a couple of more readings from Hebrews and Isaiah to help us kind of ground into this concept. The next reading is from Hebrews 13, verses 5 through 8. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, 
The Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Remember, your leaders who taught you the word of God, think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. That, my friends, is who Christ is. And that is what Christ does. Jesus came to help us through our struggles. And sometimes when we're going through some pretty tough stuff and we think God has left us, God has done an exit stage left, God has not left. God promises to stay with us That is what it means to have Christ in us. God is with you right in the midst of the struggles that you're going through right now, right through the messiness of the lives that we live. Next, Christ is with us in our sorrow. When we have Christ with us, it doesn't mean that our sorrow is going to go away. But here's what the Bible says. We have sorrow not like those who have no hope. My friends, we are Easter people. Christ is risen. Yes, we go through times of sadness. Yes, we go through times of sorrow. But we are Easter people. We have hope. We have hope. So sorrow comes to us? Of course it does. Of course we're sad when we lose the opportunity to interact with somebody that we love. Maybe it's a family member or a friend or a pet that we've lost, or maybe it's a tradition that's fallen by the wayside. Of course sorrow comes, but Jesus is with us in our sorrow, and that's what it means to have Christ with us. So let's take a look at one more scripture reading. The last scripture reading comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 2 and 3. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. So you heard it a little bit in the children's message this morning that when Jesus went back up into heaven, the last thing that Jesus said to his followers, by the way, they were men and women, I know you're upset, and I, don't, you, I know you don't know what's going to come next. But here's what I want to tell you. When I go back up into heaven, I'm going to send somebody in my place. And Jesus called that somebody the comforter. Jesus was the first comforter, and then he was sending the second comforter. The second comforter. So when Jesus went back to heaven, 40 days later, the Holy Spirit came down to earth. And the Holy Spirit is, in many respects, better a better comforter than Jesus himself. Let's let that one sink in for a minute. The Holy Spirit, in many ways, is a better comforter than Jesus Christ himself. And let me talk to you and tell you a little bit about why some people think that. When you study the life of Jesus, when he was on this earth, when he had his human flesh on, Jesus helped people because they came to him. Jesus was kind of localized. Jesus didn't travel outside the borders. And his whole ministry took place in a very small area, probably about the size of the state of Vermont. The state of Vermont, pretty small size. He never got up and got outside the borders. So if you needed to talk to Jesus, or if you needed Jesus' help, you needed to physically boogie to him. You needed to go to him 
so that you could speak with him, talk with him, and be healed. Well, that gave Jesus a very limited ability of the folks that he could actually minister to and who he could help. So that's why when Jesus went back up to heaven, he came and gave the Holy Spirit to us, which was plan B. Jesus plan A, Holy Spirit plan B. Jesus sent his Holy Spirit, and guess what? The Spirit lives in every single one of us. So that when you're going through trials or tribulations or need help or need to step into rough conversations or difficult conversations, you don't have to look way up there because you got Jesus and the Holy Spirit right here, right here with you. And that, my friends, is what it really means to have Christ with us, Christ with us. So one of the greatest gifts that Jesus gives us is the forgiveness of sins. So we're now going to enter into a time of Holy Communion where we have the ability to remember Christ in us, Christ with us, and Christ through us. Christ, our Lord, invites all to his table who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us all confess our sin before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So the night in which Jesus was with his followers for the last time having the Last Supper, he took the bread. He raised it up to his Father and blessed it and said to his followers, take, eat. This is my body, given for you. Every time you celebrate Holy Communion, remember the greatest gift that I have given you, which is the forgiveness of sins. When the supper was over, he took the cup, and he raised it up to his father and blessed it. Back then, the cup was filled with wine. As the United Methodist Church we do not serve alcohol in respect for our youth who are invited up to the table and for those who have gone through treatment or are having other alcoholic issues. We serve grape juice, so please know that as you come forward. He raised the cup and he said, bless this. This is the blood that I have shed for you. This is the cup of love that I have given to you. Drink and remember, your sins are forgiven. So at this point, I'm going to ask that our ushers come forward and our servers. We will serve communion to those folks, and then they will come out. Please know that you are all invited to this table. This table has the cloth of grace and of love and is covered with justice. of Christ.
Can you just hear the words, Christ with us, Christ in us, and Christ through us? Amen. And now it is time, my friends, for our offering. And I would like to uh, let you know that uh, it is your offering that allows us to do ministry work inside these walls and uh, outside of these walls equally as importantly. We ask that you would continue to give with a strong and faithful heart. Thank you for your extravagant generosity. Please rise. All right, something that's going to happen just a little bit different this morning is I'm going to have you be seated before we sing our closing praise song, and we're going to talk about a little bit of strategy. In addition to my $100 bill on the basketball, it's going to be a little bit different. All right, so um, any, raise your hand if you've ever had a conversation with the Holy Spirit that you weren't particularly excited about. Yep, got some hands going up. All right, so the Holy Spirit and I have been having this ongoing dialogue for a number of months. And the good part of the dialogue has been how great this church is doing and what a wonderful position that we're in. We have done fabulous ministry together. And so I had to go back and think a little bit about some of the stuff that we've been doing. Well, we've been enhancing our worship service through music, through videos, through messages, through prayers, through you guys inviting other people to come and join us, to the fact that we have to put a little note in the grace notes or in the bulletin that says, hey, if you're able, can you park in the back 40 so that we can make more room for our visitors and folks coming in. And our missional team have got a missional schedule that they follow throughout the entire year where this church can not only be the hands and feet of people inside this space, but outside these church walls. And we're thrilled to welcome new families and friends to our Wednesday night program with our kiddos and young families. Then the U-Zone, 
the building that we own, the building that we, prior to a year or two ago, we're kind of trying to figure out what are we going to do with this building? How can we keep it? How can we still be mission work within our community? And we've been able to partner with the West Central Education District. And so they've got the SAIL, S-A-I-L, program going on there, which is Skills for Adulthood Independent Living. And it empowers young people to get from where graduating from high school, taking a couple of more years of a program to learn some of the life skills that they need to pick up and use. Then we've opened up our church building. We've got the Red Cross coming in here on a regular basis, and we also have the WIC program. The WIC program comes in once a month. That's a program for women, infants, and children, and it helps give them more resources uh, and financial resources, some coaching and some counseling for some things that they need to do. Church leadership, oh my gosh, we've had new church leadership people step up into positions where they felt their spirit and their gifts, which allowed some of our folks to take an off-ramp and step back a little bit, regroup, decide what else they want to do within our church walls and not always have to be on the same committee, the same team year after year. And our finances, oh my gosh, where we are year to date compared to where we were last year, you're going to get a report in a couple weeks, is like night and day. So you all have been really helpful with your extravagant generosity, stepping up and giving to allow us to do more ministry work. So our vision that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks has been Christ in us, Christ with us, and Christ through us. So that's kind of the dialogue that the Holy Spirit and I have been having. Now, another part of that dialogue, the part that I'm not so excited about, is the part where the Spirit is asking me to finish up my ministry here with you in June of 2025. So to stay with you through my appointment, June of 2025, and then uh, we will welcome in your new pastor in July of 2025. So what I'm being called up to do is take the great work that we've done here and take it to the next church. Take it to the next group of people that also want to go through the process of revisioning, revitalizing, and doing great kingdom work. Now, the good news is, about that, is we are way ahead of uh, the curve on working with the annual conference to have this happen. Typically, we wouldn't be having these conversations until maybe January or February or even March of next year. But in all transparency, I wanted to be honest with you guys. I'm tired of duking it out with the Spirit, and I finally just gave in and said, okay, I'll do it. So we've got Becky Jo Messenbrink, who is our district superintendent. She was here a couple of weeks ago, and some of you guys got to meet her. She actually, you guys, grew up in Atwater. So how far is Atwater from Painesville? Anybody got any idea? 45 miles. 18 miles? Okay, so she grew up really close to here. So she clearly understands what it means to do uh, ministry in greater Minnesota. So she is going to be walking side by side with us along with the cabinet and the bishop so that we can figure out what knowledge, skills, and abilities we want in our next pastor. And a matter of fact, she's going to even meet with SPRC, that's our Staff Parish Relations Committee, and they're going to be meeting with her already on Wednesday night to start developing that plan. And we'll keep you guys updated along the way, keep you in the know. If you have any questions, all you've got to do is come to leadership, come to SPRC, or come to me, and we'll do the best we can to answer them in full transparency. So that's what's going on. That's the work we've got. Um, I found this wonderful Bible verse, and I even pulled it out of the message. And here's what it says. So let us keep focused on the goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us. If any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. And you will see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. And that comes from Philippians 3, 15 through 16. So with that, I'd like to ask you to rise and sing as loudly as you can our closing praise song.
So a couple announcements before we accept our closing blessing. Again, I know you people way in the back can't see, but you folks can. Can you turn around and thank the folks in our AV? We've got Bill Verant up there, Tim Bruntmeyer to there, and David. And they're all trying to learn the system from David. As we've mentioned before, we need to give David some vacation days. And in order to do that, we've got to learn the system and learn how it works. So we're going to have some bumps and bruises along the way, but we don't care because we are going to learn it. So no worries. We also have a ton of corn that is bagged up downstairs that you can uh, give your special donation. It's going to the church mission field. We also have corn out in our parking lot. And I understand, as Linda mentioned, we're going to be picking corn all week. And what we learned over the weekend is that if you get four or five people, you can pick what we need to get picked in literally an hour. So we're not talking about uh, hours and hours of time, we're talking about one hour. So if you've got that time and energy this week, please reach out to uh, Linda uh, or Randy Brink, that would be so helpful. And then of course we have coffee and treats. So please accept this as our final closing blessing today. Lord, may we all know that God is in us and God is with us and God is working through us and we're not done. Amen. Have a great weekend and be safe, my friends.